Hey everyone, Madribred here. Pokemon Fire Red with only one Hoppip was a real luck fest. Let's follow that up with a run that might have to be even luckier. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Emerald with a team of only one Mareep? So Mareep is a pretty weak electric type from Gen 2. In this game, it's got static, a decent enough ability, but that doesn't really save it from its pretty low stats. I appreciate that we at least have passable special attack for once in these runs, but that speed is really low. We're gonna have to keep a pretty strong level lead if we want to just not get hit first. By level up, we learn quite a few decent moves, but the lack of Thunderbolt until we get it by TM might be a problem. Speaking of TMs, I'm seeing Thunderbolt and Iron Tail, but outside of that, I'm not entirely sure I'm interested in any of this. Even Iron Tail itself, I doubt we'll need until maybe the Steven Stone fight at the very end of the game. We might just need Thunderbolt and Thunder a lot. Like always, I'm writing the script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I'm pretty sure that I could beat Wallace since most of his team is weak to electricity, but I don't really think I'm going to be able to beat Stephen Stone at the end. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Marie. I'll need other Pokémon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokémon in battles. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokéballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Oh, and this video is sponsored by Chimera again, since it actually went really well last time. Let's do this. I got lots of good suggestions from you guys on what name to go for with this one, and it was pretty hard to pick, but I decided to go with the classic name him after the wrong Pokemon gag. So in the end, I named him Wooloo, because that's hilarious. Our nature is mild, so more special attack and less defense. That's probably one of the best natures we could get, although ground moves will be a real problem. Oh, and I leveled up a little before I got the stats footage. Sorry, I forgot to grab it right at level 5. <laughs> So, the start of the run. Uh, Mareep is a little bit weaker than a starter Pokémon in terms of overall stats, so this place is reasonably well balanced for us. Really, the early game is all about being ready for the Rock Gym, as that's going to be the first major problem of the run. I don't really think they have any ground moves, but she does have two Geodudes who are part ground type. We can Thundershock her Nose Pass, but it's not going to work on the Geodudes. I'm thinking the best way to deal with them might be to just growl a few times, then tackle until they go down. It doesn't sound like a great solution, and I'm betting we're going to have to grind a lot, but it's the only choice we have. Alright, so by the time we get to the Rock Gym, we are already at level 16. Kinda get the feeling I'm gonna have to grind more though, considering we did less than a quarter of her health and damage by the time she took us down. We have to beat three Rock types. What level are we gonna need to be to win this? You know what, guess the level in the comment section. I'm curious what everyone guesses. So it's back to the grind. We've already beaten all the trainers since there aren't really many this early in the game. I mean, uh, other than the hikers, but we're not fighting them for the obvious reasons of they have Geodudes too. I pretty much expected that this was going to be a rough grind, but I was hoping that their AI would take it easy on me since it's the first gym. Nope! Lots of Rock Tomb and Rock Throw. To be honest, I'm starting to think we're going to have to level up till mid-20s before we stand a chance, and when we're grinding against Pokémon this week, it might take a while. It really doesn't help that we pretty much can't grind special attack effort values this early in the game either. By the time that we can reliably fight things for special attack, our effort values will probably be maxed out. That's kind of what I expect in Emerald runs though, this happens all the time. Okay, so I tried a few more times at level 22. We're still dealing almost nothing, but a couple of growls meant that they weren't doing much either. Even with a crit though, we just couldn't keep her health down. She's got healing items, and we don't. The most we're allowed to do is hold a berry, but it's just not going to heal us enough to have us beat all three of her Pokémon. Also, this grind is really tedious, especially since there's some ground types, so I can't just ignore the screen and Thundershock everything. Nowadays, you guys always tell me to use speed up and turbo buttons and stuff to make this part more tolerable, and trust me, it's great for saving the joints in my hands. But don't go thinking that it makes this too easy. A fast grind just means I have more time to work on the editing and the script of the run. It's still pretty big time investment to have to grind, and I'd still rather try a fight over and over if I think I stand a chance. But, you know, we obviously don't stand a chance right now, so I have to grind. At level 26, I try again! This time we hung on for a pretty long time, to the point that we actually beat the first Geodude. 
Crits were involved, but when you have to tackle that many times, you're bound to land a few crits. We managed to take down the first Geodude, but the second one was too much of a problem. Our speed gets wrecked by all the rock tombs too, so sometimes we're not able to even growl first, leading us to taking even more damage. Am I really gonna have to be level 30 just to fight the first gym battle? Have I ever needed to be this high of a level for Roxanne's rock gym? Okay, again at level 30. The first Geodude held on for ages, both critting a rock throw and hitting a few rock tombs to lower our speed. I wrote down accuracy for some reason. <laughs> she held on with potions, but eventually she went down. The second Geodude didn't start great either, and I was worried we'd just lose again, especially after she started spamming Defense Girl. A lucky crit managed to speed things up, but again, she has potions, so the fight wasn't over from just that. We only had 12 health left, but eventually she did go down. Last was Nosepass, who went straight for Harden. So I used Thunder Wave to paralyze her, giving us the speed advantage. We hit Thundershock to do tons of damage. She hit Tackle to bring us to only 2 health, and we hit another Thundershock to finally win. For as many attacks as the enemy made against us in that fight, it's crazy to think that we'd have lost if any one of her Pokemon just used Tackle one more time. So, uh, we're level 30, so I don't really think the fighting gym is gonna be an issue. You know what? Go to the comment section and guess how it's gonna go. I'd say I'll wait, but I'm totally not waiting. On our very first try, we nearly swept his whole team, with only Makahita hanging on from a hit. His vital throw didn't even do 20 damage to us, that's how high of a level lead we have right now. Shouts out to anyone who uh, guessed that one correct. <laughs> if this was on my Twitch page, that could have been a prediction for channel points. Follow my Twitch page, I swear I'm trying to stream more. The adventures of newbie Nate will continue, I promise. Okay, so with that win we have access to more trainers we can fight, but we're actually so overleveled from grinding for the rock gym that I'm not totally sure that we're gonna need more experience. We do have the electric gym coming up, and I figure that that's going to be a problem since we'll get paralyzed, but maybe we're already strong enough. Only one way to find out. First though is a rival fight we have to do on the way, but Thundershock made short work of her whole team. I do love using electric types. It's awesome being super effective against so much with such good moves, while also only having one type that can really shut you down. As soon as that was over, I tried the electric gym. First was Voltorb, so I started testing Tackle and Thundershock just to see what would do more damage, and honestly, it's really hard to tell. We actually had a lot of troubles with Voltorb because Super Potions kept him up longer than expected, and of course he blew up at the end. Electrike was second and went down in two hits, but third was Magneton. We paralyzed each other right away, then I tackled to do just about nothing. Thundershock seems to do a bit more, but we went down fast. Well, that one wasn't even close, so I'm fighting trainers. Sucks to be grinding again so early in the run after that terrible rock gym grind, but at least I still have lots of trainers to fight. I'm feeling a bit hopeful because I don't think I'm very far off two-shotting our first two Pokemon, and I think that will let us get into the Magneton fight with a lot more health. Who knows, maybe it won't be too bad? During the grind, I was talking about the run a little bit on Twitter when Internal Sentoku swooped in like a hero with some Pokemath. Apparently Thundershock is going to be at least slightly stronger than going with Tackle, so that means I don't need to worry about getting paralyzed off static. That's good to know for the next try. And would you look at that, we just learned Thunder. I forgot that was coming up. It just feels like it's early in the game for Thunder, you know? Okay, well, I think we're ready now then. Next try, and this one started much better with us one-shotting Voltorb with Thunder before we can get hit by self-destruct. And Electrike only used Howl and Quick Attack, so we didn't take too much damage before he went down. For Magneton, we hit Thunder to bring him to red health, but we got paralyzed in the process. He healed back up though, so we had to use Thundershock to soften him up, then another Thunder to take him down. Last was Magnetric. Now this one was stressful because we kept missing Thunders, and he still had more healing items. It's a gamble on if Paralysis is going to kick in and if Thunder is going to hit, so it would have been easy to lose. But with 14 health left, we managed to get the win. With that stunning victory, we hit the road again. So we have to deal with Maxi, then the Fire Gym, and I'm actually pretty worried. They both have ground types with Magnitude. That move is a bit random, and we could just luck out with it not doing much, but we only have Tackle to damage them with. At least after Maxi we can get Return, but for Maxi himself, it's gonna be a problem. Mighty Anna to lower our attack, and then a Ground-type so we have to use Tackle. It's a rough combo. 
Let's see how that goes. First try in, it starts great with Thunder one-shotting Mighty Enna and Thunder Shock one-shotting Zubat. As soon as Camrupt came out, though, level 8 magnitude. We hung on, but Tackle isn't doing much. He used Ember after, though, so he is using other moves. Let's just try this a bunch of times and see what happens. So, uh, 14 tries later and I've made no progress. <laughs> Seriously, even on the runs where he uses dumb moves like Ember, we still just lose because Tackle is so weak, and he has a Super Potion. Maybe I can get him to use the Super Potion on his Zubat? Nope! After a brutal 8 more tries, I finally got Camrupt's health low, and it turns out Maxi uses multiple Super Potions. I think he's one of those trainers who just saves one for each Pokémon, so I have to grind. See, the worst thing about having to grind here is that if I could just beat Maxi, I'd be able to get Return and we'd probably be fine. I can't think of any other way to deal more damage other than grinding, considering I'm already using a Silk Scarf. Let's just hope that I don't get stuck at the Fire Gym right after. So, I don't know what to tell you, but the whole grind was a waste of time. On my first few tries, a few levels later, I just crit three times. I don't even know what to say, I'm just gonna go grab Return real quick. Okay, Fire Gym time. Numel was a one-shot with Return, as was Slugma with Thundershock. Camerupt only used Tackle, so in spite of her two Hyper Potions, we still took her out just fine. Last was Torkoal, and we instantly missed Thunder as she set up a sunny day. Well, that made our second Thunder even less accurate, but it hit anyway for the one-shot. So there's no trainers between us and the normal gym, so that's our goal, but before I went there, I took the Root Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, I recorded fresh this time. I'm in no rush. The normal gym is gonna go fine. Return one-shot Spinda, Thunder one-shot Vigoroth, Lununu only got in a headbutt before we took them down, and Slacking went for counter when I was using Thunder Wave, so he never hit us. Feels so good to finally have an easy gym battle again. On my way to the flying gym, I stopped to buy a new Moville so that I could pick up the TM for Thunderbolt to replace Thundershock. Thunder is still stronger, but I'm gonna need something accurate to get through most of the game with. Hey, it's time for the rival fight before the flying gym. It was super easy though. Thunderbolt took out our whole team. Wait, it was raining. I could have used Thunder. I'm, I'm so bad about remembering that. The flying gym itself was mostly a sweep, other than Altaria, who hit a nasty earthquake. It's nice knowing that I can survive one of those, considering the next gym has a clay doll. It'll be stronger when they do it, but we'll be stronger by then too. Well, it's time to travel again. We have to do a few areas right now, including Mount Pyre and the Magma base. Normally the level we're at would be good enough for now, but we have another maxi fight coming up, and even if we have return, I'm still worried. Plus, after that is the two-on-one Psychic Gym battle, where I'm fully expecting us to get brick-walled for ages against Claydol. Who knows, maybe I'll crit Claydol with Return, then one-shot the rest of their team with Thunder! It's a long shot, but it's the only way I can think of winning below level... 70? You know what, guess that one too. <laughs> But first, Maxi. Mighty N is first, so our attack went down, but he went down in a single thunder. Problem is, he leaves our attack too low to two-shot Camerupt. Well, he did use Rock Slide. Let's just try until he misses. Four tries later, and we didn't even need a miss, because we crit him to one-shot him. Last was Crobat, and we did get confused, but one Thunderbolt still took him down. That honestly wasn't too bad. With that done, we have to take on the Aqua Hideout next. I don't usually talk about this place very much, since there isn't a real boss fight in here, but most of what we fight here is weak to electricity, so I hunt down every trainer in the place. The next big battle is the ever-terrifying Psychic Gym. I have to be ready. They don't even let you fight them till you have two Pokémon, so I'll grab a Magikarp and get in there. Okay, Psychic Gym. We crit Claydol, he didn't go down, Earthquake hurt a ton, then Zatu outsped and finished us off. Well, I guess that saves me the time on trying until we get a crit. We're so weak that it doesn't even matter. So, it's time to grind. Return is the strongest non-electrical move that we can get, and we can't get a type advantage, so we just have to grind until we can one-shot Clay Doll. If we only dropped him to high red at level 58, though, then I think we're gonna need quite a few levels. We don't really gain much attack per level, after all. I went ahead and just beat a ton of swimmers on the eastern side of the map since they give decent experience and mostly just use water types. There's tons of them, but we still have to do some wild Pokemon grinding. 
This is a really rough one, but at least they're water types? While we're grinding, give me 30 seconds of your time to do this week's sponsorship, Chimera. The last one actually went so well that they want to sponsor me long term, so thank you, because honestly, that was because of you guys more than it was me. You're the ones who bought the shirts. <laughs> So many of you went over to Chimera, linked in the description and pinned comment of course, and bought some nice ring spun cotton t-shirts with my discount code MADRYBREAD, that apparently it broke some kind of record because they haven't gotten that kind of response before. That's wild. I'm guessing it was this awesome space shirt that sold so many of you on it because lots of you left comments about that one. I've never really been good at selling merch, so instead of buying whatever lame merch I'd make, support the show by buying something from Chimera. I don't know if that was 30 seconds. Look, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm terrible at this sponsorship thing. Back to the video. Time to try again at level 65. We still do slightly less than half of Claydol's health and damage with return, but at least we can take an Earthquake and a Psychic. We're still slower than Zatu though, so we might have to get lucky enough to crit Claydol and have Zatu use Calm Mind at the same time. I'm not sure how realistic that is, but I'll try more. Okay, 10 tries later and we landed a crit, but it still wasn't a one-shot, so he just uses a Hyper Potion. On the next round though, we landed another crit and that one was a one-shot. Man, so we don't even just need a crit, we need damage range luck on top of the crit. So he went down and we went after Zatu with Thunderbolt while he used Calm Mind, but they ended up setting up Sunny Day and Light Screen. Thanks to that, even when we could hit Thunder, it just wasn't a one-shot anymore. Ah, we were so close. More tries, this time at level 70, so hopefully we only need one crit. Right away, return Crit Clay Doll for a much-needed one-shot, and Zetu wasted his time with our Magikarp. As Solrock came out, I went for Thunder and hit it right away, getting a one-shot as Zatu used Calm Mind. Knowing that I couldn't let that build up too much, I Thunderbolted Zatu to take him down, and Lunatone hit us with Psychic. It hit pretty hard, but at least it wasn't Light Screen, so our next Thunder knocked him out. I'm just happy that's over. So we're supposed to do some stuff to save the world and everything right now, but this is a Pokemon challenge, so the world almost ending isn't nearly as interesting as actual Pokemon fights. Let's get the Archie fight out of the way real quick, then it's onto the Water Gym. Archie was super easy, we swept his whole team with Thunderbolt. <laughs> The Water Gym was super easy thanks to his Whiskash using Amnesia instead of a ground move. His Kingdra could have caused issues with the double team, but our first Thunder hit for a one-shot. Last before the Elite Four is the Wally fight. It wasn't even close. We didn't even take a hit the entire fight. Man, must suck to train the whole game for this one big fight just to have your whole team go down to a Mareep without landing a hit. Alright, let's take a look at our stats before the Elite Four. It's not that bad, and the special attack is higher than I was expecting, but I get the feeling that we're going to be slow enough to take some hits. I made sure to go ahead and make a Shell Bell so that we could at least heal while we fight. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Dark Trainer Sydney. Right away is Mighty Yenna, so our attack went down, but one Thunderbolt took him down. For Shift Tree, we hit Thunder for tons of damage in spite of his double team. He landed Torment, so we can't use the same move twice in a row, but he went down without actually hurting us. For Cacturn, I had to use Return and Thunder to take him down, but we lost tons of speed to Cotton Spores and even got hit by Leech Seed along the way. Crawdont was a one-shot with Thunderbolt, and last was Absol. He started building Swords Dances as we missed a Thunder, but our Thunderbolt ended up being a one-shot. This fight took a few tries, mostly because Shift Tree likes to use Swagger. Second is Ghost Trainer Phoebe. Her first Dusclops likes to spam Protect, so I used Thunder Wave on the first turn to save on power points, then Thunderbolt for the one-shot. Against the second Dusclops, she actually hung on and hit an Earthquake. Forgot she has that. We took her out on the follow-up. Her two Bayonets and her Sableye were each one-shots with Thunderbolt. So far, so good. Third is Ice Trainer Glacia. Celio is a one-shot with Thunderbolt, and second is Glalie. We missed Thunder and took an Ice Beam in the process, but our second Thunder took him down. The second Celio was another one-shot, and the second Glalie also went down in one Thunder. Last was Walrein, who couldn't handle a single Thunderbolt. Now it's on to the hard part. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Drake. Shelgon was a bit annoying at the start with Protect, but on most tries he goes down easily. The problem is Flygon right after, who easily takes us down in one Earthquake and outspeeds us. I'm not sure if it was from the Rock Tomb lowering our speed or not, but either way, I think I have to grind. Grinding here isn't too bad though, mostly because we can just fight the Elite Four itself for levels. 
It's a little dialogue heavy, but now that you guys let me use the turbo button, I don't have to mash my way through the dialogue myself. So no complaining from me, this grind actually isn't that bad, I've got a run to do. Here we are again at level 80. Even after a bunch of tries where we hardly have a scratch going into the Flygon fight, we still just go down. Okay, more levels. Level 85, it's still going the same way. Man, this is brutal. We're getting close to a two-shot. Maybe if we end up faster soon, we can win? Since when is Flygon so tough? Level 91, and we didn't get hit by Rock Tomb, but we're still slower than Flygon. Are you kidding me? If we were faster, we could two-shot him at this point. So, by this point in the grind, we are just mopping the floor with the entire rest of the Elite Four. It's almost funny, it's at the point where we can get all the way to Flygon without using any items between battle, and sometimes hardly even be hurt, just to be outsped and lose to Flygon at the end every single time. We're still getting about a level every run through of the Elite Four though, and we have less than 10 levels until max, so we only need to get a few more before I'll have enough rare candies to just top it off that way. I just hope it makes us faster than Flygon. On our way to max level though, we hit level 95, and after a run where Rock Tomb missed, we were finally faster and took down Flygon. Altaria was a one-shot with Thunder, as was Kingdra. Last was Salamence, and he's actually faster than us, so we took a Dragon Claw, but Static paralyzed him. Our Thunder missed, but on the second round we were faster because of the paralysis, so we managed to one-shot him. I can't believe I'm finally past this horrible fight. Finally, the Pokemon Champion Wallace. First is Waylord, who went down in one Thunderbolt, and second is Water Onyx, so our attack is down. Well, he's a one-shot, but I don't like that our attack is down before Whiskash. Speaking of, he's next. Our return really isn't doing much damage, but for whatever baffling reason, he used Amnesia for special defense. On the second round, he earthquaked us for more than half our health and damage, so he could have beat us, but on the third round, we just took him down. Tentacruel was a one-shot with Thunderbolt, and Ludicolo was a one-shot as well. Last is the pseudo-legendary Melodic, but yet again, all it took was one Thunderbolt. I kind of feel like Drake's Flygon was the real final boss. With that victory, we get into the Hall of Fame and win the run, but you know it's not over yet. We've got a post-game fight with Steven Stone, so let's put his team on screen. Honestly, we often just can't beat him, but I think it might be possible this time. If we pick up Iron Tail, then we could use that to beat Cradilly, who would otherwise be an issue. Clay Doll might just shut us down, but I don't think this is impossible. Only a few levels from Max, so I'm gonna top off. Let's give this a try. So after about 8 tries in a row where we just got hit by Toxic, instantly losing, we finally got one where we got hit by Steelwing instead, letting us easily one-shot Skarmory with Thunder. Second was Eggron, a Pokemon with Earthquake. Thankfully, Thunder one-shot him too. Out third was Metagross, his pseudo-legendary. He outspeeds us, his Earthquake brings us to only 26 health, then we missed a Thunder that wasn't gonna one-shot him anyway. So, uh, he finished us. Well, you know what? At least we lost hilariously badly at level 100, so we're not left wondering if we were one lucky hit away from a win. Even if we crit, Claydol was next. It's probably best if I start on the next challenge. That was such a crazy start and stop run. Either we were grinding like crazy to get past a rough fight, or breezing through fights on the first try like it was nothing. Some parts felt easy, but man those grinds. I really hope you guys like that run. For the next Pokemon challenge, it's going to be in two weeks on Saturday, when I come to you with another Pokemon Black run. I don't know 100% what Pokemon we're going to use yet, but if you're in the live stream of the premiere, then I'm sure future MDB can tell you. As always, I'm looking at your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Now for the outro vloggy thing where I get to just talk about whatever. I guess the most pressing thing to talk about is a long-term sponsorship. That's crazy. Again, thank you so much. I, it's just, you know, so many of you guys actually went and bought the shirts. It's funny. I've tried to say for so long that sponsorships are way better when they're just really honest, and they've legit still not made me sign anything that dictates what I say in the actual ads. I really can say whatever I want. All I have to do is show you the designs, which obviously look awesome, let you know that it does feel good and it's gone through the wash just fine, and show you the prices. What do you know? It's like the product sells itself.
And yet I still get all these sponsorship offers from companies that just want me to read whatever their dumb script is. Rest assured that I'm not going to try to sell you anything that I don't think is a good quality product, and most importantly, I'm not going to lie to you in some kind of advertisement. Because I, I totally get it, people assume that, that the YouTubers don't mean what they say in the advertisements anyway when they do something like Raid Shadow Legends or whatever, but I personally would rather just be the guy who only advertises products that I like, and is just honest about them, and says everything in my own words, you know? And you know what? It worked! <laughs> That's what Chimera told me, you saw it in the video. It turns out that honesty just worked. Isn't that beautiful to see? I hope that more sponsors uh, <laughs> take the hint from this. Anyway, I'm in turbo high spirits from that, uh, because, you know, on YouTube, money fluctuates, everyone always worries about money, and knowing that I have a long-term sponsorship, of course, if it continues, it could stop at any point, I guess, but as long as it keeps going well, uh, the money completely pays for my mom's rent, and that's a massive worry off my mind. So, I'm feeling awesome. Just, it's helped me a lot. I got this sponsorship because of you guys, less than me. So thank you so much for, for all going on the link and actually buying the stuff. Don't feel like you have to, just thanks. <laughs> Life-changing stuff, you know? Okay, I'm gonna go and get this stuff edited because I'm already falling behind today and my throat is getting super dry because it's been a brutal winter and it's getting all, all awful feeling. Thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time, have a nice day.